Okay, so here we are for part three of the Born-Heber cycle um, problem here. Okay, um, so in the first video, we talked a little bit about what the Born-Heber cycle is. All right, in the second one, I tried to break it down how we derived all the different, um, it, you know, basically different reactions from the problem given. All right, and then um, basically now that we have all of these written out, okay, and keep in mind we found these from in our last video or the second video of the Born-Heber cycle. Okay, so here I have them nicely written out and not on a whiteboard because at least here it's a little bit neater for me to work with. With the whiteboard, I can't do these kinds of long extended problems and describe them at the same time. Uh, okay, so we were given all of these, okay? So now this is starting to look a little bit more like a Hess's Law problem, right? Um, and really, the only difficult part about the Born-Heber cycle is just determining, okay, well, what the hell are all of these equations going to be? Now that we have them, we can just work this out like a basic uh, Hess's Law problem. So what we really want here, okay, because keep in mind uh, from the last video, we're trying to find the lattice energy of rubidium chloride, okay? So what we're really saying is that if we were to take a solid rubidium chloride, all right, and we were to break it down into its constituent ions, we would get, you know, rubidium plus in gaseous form, and then we'd get chlorine uh, minus in a gaseous form, so we get an anion, uh, an anion and a cation here, okay? But we need to find out, well, then what is delta H? Right? We need to find out, well, what is delta H, right? And we already know from Hess's law, right, that if we set these up correctly, they'll, you know, components will cancel out, we should get this exact equation. And then if we add up all the changes in enthalpy, right, we will get the total amount of enthalpy, and in this case will be the lattice energy of this reaction. Okay, so let me actually do this one by one. I'm gonna do my best. I'm holding the iPad with one hand and I'm writing with the other. So you might see some awkward foot pictures. I apologize in advance, okay? So let's actually start off. So which, you know, first let's actually look at this rubidium chloride in the solid form. Which one of these equations here has a rubidium chloride solid? Here's a hint. I'm actually writing it in now because I made a mistake before, all right? The answer is the first one, okay? Now we want it on the left side here. It's on the right side here. So what we're gonna do is let's Let's write it in first. So I usually write a one, and I usually put a check mark here just to say that okay, we're using that one. And so we've got rubidium chloride solid. All right, and that's going to turn into rubidium solid plus one half Cl two gas. Okay, and we know the total amount of enthalpy is going to be negative one. No, actually, we don't. Now, keep in mind here that we reversed it, right? We were put this on the left and we put this on the right, aka our rubidium chloride became our reactant and these became our products, correct? So the enthalpy then, the sign needs to be reversed. So this is not negative 430.5, this is just 430.5. And because I have that little scribble there, I'm just gonna say there's my positive, okay? So I know that's positive, okay? Well, that's all nice and good. Now I've got my rubidium solid. Well, what I like to do here is that, okay, well, I want this, right? I really, really want this here. Now, the only place that it appears in this is rubidium gas, okay? This this um, rubidium plus uh, cation, okay? But the problem with this is that in order to put this in here, all right, I need to have something in this equation in order to relate it back to this one, okay? Now, I don't have rubidium gas here. I don't have rubidium, you know, I don't have my rubidium cation here, and I don't have an electron here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to put another step in between in order to get this rubidium uh, cation in here, okay? So what I see here is rubidium gas. Well, I see rubidium gas up here, and then here's rubidium solid. Now, rubidium solid is something that I have here. So let's turn this solid into rubidium gas, and then maybe we could turn the rubidium gas into our cation here, okay? So our second step here is that, okay, well, I wanna get rid of this rubidium solid. I would like rubidium gas to be on this side, right? Because if I have rubidium gas on the left, then my rubidium cation will be on the right, okay? So let's actually do this, because keep in mind they'll cancel across the sign, not if they're on the same side, but if you know one of them is a, a product in this case, and here it will be a reactant. So rubidium solid turns into rubidium gas. So this was the sublimination of rubidium from solid to gaseous form. That's the definition of sublimination. Okay, so we know the total amount of enthalpy change is 86 kilojoules per mole. Now, I didn't need to change the sign that time. The reason why I didn't need to change the sign is because it's the exact same as written above, okay? I didn't switch anything. So now that I've got that, let me actually cancel this as I go uh, because Professor Siegel told me to. So here's this rubidium solid. Here's this rubidium solid. I'm just gonna cross that out. Nice and happy day, all right? Um, okay, so now that I've got my gas here, 
and I wanted a rubidium cation instead, well, let's actually use this third one. I can put a check mark here. So yeah, I used it. So rubidium gas turns into rubidium cation gas plus electron. So now I'm going to write it in here. So here's my rubidium gas. Turns into my rubidium cation in a gaseous form plus an electron. Okay, because this over here was my ionization energy. All right, we said the first ionization energy of rubidium uh, is going to be, you know, what was it? The enthalpy was 402 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so 402 kilojoules per mole was the total amount of enthalpy. Do I need to change the sign? No, I don't, because this is identical to what I have up here. So here's another check mark, okay? Now let's cross this out, because I have a rubidium gas in the product here and a rubidium gas in the reactants here. So boom, boom, that's gone, okay? Now I'm nice and happy. I've got this rubidium gas. Now I want to get my, uh, my chlorine anion, right? I really want this chlorine gas anion in order to make sure that I get this at the very end. The other thing is I want to get rid of this electron because you see an electron up here? I don't, all right? So let's actually do number four. So now we've got our rubidium. We're going to concentrate on our chlorine, all right? So if I wanted this chlorine, all right, here, well, what I actually still have is this one half chlorine. Uh, this is gas, okay? So one half of elemental chlorine gas. Well, do I have anything up here with one half chlorine, you know, um, do I have anything explicitly, rather, with one half elemental chlorine gas? No, I don't. In fact, I, all I have is this Cl2, I have chlorine, elemental chlorine gas, but I don't have half of it, right? So what do I do? Well, hmm, if I were to do this uh, as per stoichiometric rules, I could say, well, one half cl elemental chlorine could probably turn into one chlorine atom gas, right? And in that case, I would have to have this, I'd have to have this, and I'd have to have the enthalpy as well, because that's how we handle this, all right? So let's actually do this. So I'm going to write in one half Cl2 gas, okay? Keep in mind, this term is identical to this one now. It turns into just Cl gas, okay? The enthalpy is going to be half of 243. That's going to be 121 point... Wait, is it 120? No, 121.5. Okay, I might have written this in wrong. Maybe I put in the wrong number there. Huh, okay, that seems to work. Yeah, so 121.5. Yeah, actually, this will cancel out there. Okay, so, yeah, so I've got 121.5. Sorry about that little cross out there, but just deal with it. And this is kilojoules per mole. Okay. And finally, all right, well, now I've got, um, I've got, well, I've got my one half chlorine gas. I've got my one half chlorine gas here. I'm going to cross that out also. All right. So still got a problem here. I've still got this uh, electron here. And actually this Cl gas, this is not Cl plus, uh, Cl minus. This isn't an anion here. I want an anion, you know, I have an anion up here. So, well, I've got one last equation uh, over here. I've got Cl gas plus electron turns into Cl minus in a gaseous form. So let's write that in here. So here I want to get, I want to cancel out this Cl gas. So I know that this Cl gas needs to be in the left side because this one's on the right side and that's how they cancel out. So here's Cl gas plus electron turns into Cl minus gas, right? Now, from here, I know that the enthalpy, because I didn't change anything, I didn't reverse anything. So this is negative 349 kilojoules per mole. If we were to basically do this now, we could cancel out this chlorine gas with this chlorine gas. We can also cancel out this electron with this electron, right? So what are we left with? We're left with rubidium chloride, solid, turns into rubidium uh, plus in a gaseous form, so that's a rubidium cation in a gaseous form, and chlorine in an anion form in gaseous, well, sorry, gaseous form anion. Okay, so let me write this down here. Okay, so I've got this. Now, that is exactly what I have up here. Okay, now how do I calculate the enthalpy then? of this, or the lattice energy of this. Well, what I'll do is I'll add up all of these terms over here, all right? And your answer should be 691 kilojoules per mole. Oh, thank goodness that's over and done with.